Holy crap. What? Look at this pack. Look at this pack. Look at this. Dude, I want this whole pack. We got Rocco, Stimulus Package, Pugnacious Pugilus. I'm going to have to get the Gallagreeters for sure. Strangle, Sticky Fingers, Plasma Jockey, Prize Fight, Jewel Thief. Oh, man. This, this pack is incredible. Inspiring Overseer does seem great, but here it is. This is it. This is the game. Oh, yeah. Hey, One Piece, dude. Don't, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, no, that, that, that can happen. Well, I think Gallagraders is the best because it just does everything. It's a two drop. It's good on a stale board. It's good to ramp. It's good to draw later. It's just fantastic. This is one of the best cards. Most solid, well-rounded. All right, so let's not overthink it. No black, no blue. Okay, what to do here? What to do here? What do we do? This is some good stuff. Knockout Blow is awesome. It's so good. It heals. It can get cheap. Zeator is proving ground for my, you know, multicolor nonsense BS. I think I might actually pick Zeator as proving grounds. You know, I I've been... Man, I've been doing good stuff today. We went 7-2. We went 6-3. and three. Oh... Do I really want to try? Because, I mean, if I'm trying to be a good gamer, I'm going to get Knockout Blow. I think it's going to be better than Zeotora's Proving Grounds. That's what I think. Do the nonsense. Okay. Let, let's assemble this very, very slowly. Because we could just still be reasonable. I want to have that out. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Oh my god. All right. Well. Well, I don't know if any of you have been watching, but I've I've passed like so many strangles. So there's literally strangles aplenty. All right. End a torch breath that late. Wow. Well, all right. So, so, so. Yeah, red, red, green are the colors that I want to be going into, broadly speaking. But there's a really huge issue, which is that I'm passing the best green, the best red, some solid white. All right. Let's let's see what we got here. It's tramway station. Get patch up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get the. Tramway Station, or the Skybridge Towers, to really make sure that we can just pierce into all the colors. Alright, we're committing to five colors on this pack. This is, this is a good set of things to do it on. Green is the one where I, I, I'm really wanting jewel thieves. I really want glitter mongers. These sort of stabilizers. And various is also how many free to play players just lost their minds watching you draft two triumphs, pick two and three. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, do you keep the cards in drafts? Oh, you do, don't you? Huh. Well. Very well. Discipline Duelist. We also have a uh, deal gone bad. It's instant speed. Um, you can get more of these. Discipline Duelist is it, it's a solid defender. It can deal some damage. So what we're really going to need is a lot of these multi-cards, and we're going to need a lot of removal. I think that these are the base colors here.
Because we can actually win with just a couple of multicolor guys like this. All right, so th th this is the win condition right now. Shattered Seraphs. I would love an Obscura storefront in general. This is actually probably pretty good to get right now. Prize fight, huh? Sure. Wow, really? The green, the green and red is gone. I would have never expected it. Um. If green is a base color, I want to just be getting some green early on to block things up a little bit. One of these two, but I think the cheaper one's probably a little better. This is actually not the worst. Good. This one sucks. I think the Jewel Thief is actually just the thing that we should take. I think the Jewel Thief is, like, ideal for stabilizing, getting to... Bigger and better things. Riveteer's Charm is pretty good, but I mean, Jewel Thief is like literally a 10 out of 10 card. There's another Strangle. Let's see if it comes back. Make Disappear is really the, the gas that we're looking for. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, man. Oh my god, yes! Dude, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the kind of value that we want to just have at our high end. Oh my god, yes! We can win the game with a Dusk Mangler. There's another Strangle. Like, literally, we could have had five Strangles. Ugh. All right. Quezas is, is, is a good card. Just like a very good card. But this is, this is just like... Now all we need is defense, really. Cleanup Crew is another excellent pickup. Another very excellent. There's a Shattered Seraph. It's fine. Again, the things that we're looking for are Glittermongers, Jewel Thief, uh, Removal, and these cards. This is this is the play. This is the game. Kill Shot's there, but I think Cleanup Crew is... I like Girder Goons a lot, but I, I think that I'd rather just get the land here. There's a hold for ransom, but, you know, the more lands that we can get. There's a Glittermonger. That's good. That's exactly what we're hunting for. Everybody Charm is just not that good. For what we're trying to do, that is. Weirdly, this is this is a solid, solid card for this ridiculous nonsense that we're making. I, I mean, in theory, I like an Exhibition Magician, but I think just, like, we, we literally need a lot of instant speed removal. Is that so? This is better. This is also okay. I know this looks weird for a normal deck. But we're, 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 we're trying to shore up the issues that specifically our weird, bizarre nonsense has. Spendable Lackey is really good because I think that we're actually base... Like, we're actually not this color. Maybe we don't even run this Discipline Duelist. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Okay. We don't really need white, but Discipline Duelist is fine. It's a fine, solid little card. Deals some damage. Shits on a few things.
I don't know how this is here, but this is here. <laughs> and someone that loves making the game go on longer. We really got to be quite careful about our four drop slots. Very easy to get that swole up, you know. Uh, this is like literally stone cold nuts. That's good stuff. We're not going to run any of that garbage. Maybe, actually. Dude, I'm the best player that's fucking ever been alive. Are you kidding me? Are you joking me? This is incredible. I think the Discipline Duels might need to take a trip to see a later town. This is unbelievable. We even have, like, white mana generators? This is incredible. All right, we're looking for duels. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we actually only have 19 cards. Should actually probably bring this guy back in for the clarity. We have a little red for Torch Breath, which is fine. We didn't wind up with much red because we passed the greatest set of red that the world has ever seen. There's a Make Disappear, and that that's probably it. There's a Riveteer's Overlook, but this is this is high value for us. Big score is also all right, but really things in the two-drop slot are, are are perfect. There's another Torch Breast. There, there's also another Dusk Mangler. Yeah, I'm getting that shit. Because now, like, if you look at our curve, we actually have a good amount of things to do here. We, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are a Mangler control list. All right. Lark Hill says this is the most exciting zero win deck I've seen in a while. Maybe, maybe we'll, maybe we'll actually create the gambler's delight list. There's a graveyard shift. We got the murder. We have graveyard shift. We have obscure interceptor. You know, it's weird to say, but I think I'm actually just gonna pick the murder. I'm just going to pick the murder. I actually bet you this will wheel. Because I think blue and black are, are... I'm getting a lot of good blue and black at weird times. So I think this or this will return. I, I don't think I need the third Dusk Mangler. I, I don't think I need it. We, we need the Waterfront District. There is a fucking whack here. Jesus. Is actually all right. Dude, I mean, this is the most disciplined duelist I've fucking ever seen in a game. Here comes a Dusk Mangler. We're, I mean, we're almost there. 
Dude, I mean, I, I really genuinely think the Discipline Duel is just... I just cut it, man. Dude, there were like seven Discipline Duelists in there. It was so funny. And look, I'm just gonna cut it right here. Makes my mana base way easier. Here's list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven duels. Seems good. It's gonna be something in the four drop area. Probably the Run out of town. We actually have 15 creatures in here? That's insane. It's a tended socialite, but I definitely think that I need it and want it. Let's take a look at the mana. So we have one planes, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, that's actually a really good amount of those. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight sources of blue. I don't think we need eight sources of blue. Nine, ten. All right, cool. Let's peel that out. Swamps. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, that seems good. Seven, seven, all right, mountains. One, two, three. Three ways to get mountains, huh? This guy feels a little weird, there's a fourth way. It's okay. Now, green is the one I'm really worried about. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six greens, huh? We need more greens, right? So blue is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just don't think we need that much. Swamps are four, five, six, seven. Seven and seven, and then we have six forests. I think we need more of these fuckers. Because we don't really have any fixing for them the way that we do for black and for blue. We have extra fixing over here. So I need to peel from one of these. Good. Cut this. We could conceivably cut the torch breath and put in the prize fight, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not a coward. Corpse Appraiser is higher value than the Psionic Snoop, even though the Psionic Snoop can actually like do more shit. Great. This is the game. All right, let's uh, let's uh, open up some predictions. Uh, how many wins will I get with this? Actually, let me let me let me go back to this. Let me let me delete the prediction. Sorry, delete and return points. All right, let, let's start this prediction. How many wins will Day Nine get? All right, there you go, there's your options. We did five plus, four, three or two, and one or less. All right, here's the game. Three dust manglers would have been ridiculous. Opponent goes first. Zombie! Zombie! Grub! 
Zombie Grub! Yeah! Zombie Grub just raided with a party of 316. Dude, zombie. Holy shit, Jessica, how is Korea? Or was Korea? I don't know if you got back, but from Twitter it sounds like you're there. What are you done, oh zombie grub? One of the current staples in the StarCraft II commentary, hosting, analysis, and do it all scene. Dude, we, we, this, this entire deck is such a gasoline. Well, to any of you who are zombie grubba rubber roos who've never been here before, I'm Sean. Grew up playing oh so very, very, very much StarCraft. Like, oh my god, I played a lot of StarCraft, dude. Like, I really like StarCraft. And then I've been uh, doing more general card game, strategy game stuff in recent years. So I'm going to do like this. And what we're doing now is we're playing a draft where we made five color the plan. Five color is the plan. Five color is the game. This is what it is. Maybe you've never watched Zombie Grub's channel. She does all sorts of great coverage of StarCraft things, qualifier events, major events, and everything in between. And I just did a fantastic interview with Zombie Grub on her Caster Calls podcast. <gasps> Holy shit, I've never been luckier in my life. Warm welcome, sure. Cool Thief is so good. I'm this parcel, eh? So I, I actually think I'm gonna just send the jewel thief back. Actually, I think it's it's better to get a kind of bring down the overall temperature of things, bring it down a wee bit. Like my opponent could just spend the ominous parcel to blow up my glitter monger, but then I can use the corpse appraiser to exile it, get another card into the hand. I don't have any white mana sources outside of this one. Perfect. So this can buff itself twice, so we're not going to do none of that nonsense. But dude, yeah, I had a fantastic time on Zombie Grub's Caster Calls podcast. You should just look up Day 9 Caster Calls. Ow, you fuck. Oh shit, yeah. So I'm actually going to play the cleanup crew and destroy this card. And Quetzal Augur of Agonies is a really good way to start stabilizing in a momento. Frankly, we can just like play the forest as well and play the glamorous outlaw and then end of turn generate with this. Oh, white mana. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not going to be attacking for, like, ever, man. I don't see any black mana. The only way to actually up and roast me would be with a kill shot. So I'm not going to attack with a cleanup crew. I'm just going to chill for a while. I don't know what... What? I think this is a for the family. This doesn't have trample. Great. F is for family. It's gonna give it plus four plus four because there's four dudes out. Which is fine. Which is fine. I, I, I really, 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 really badly need.
If I play this, I can get the Glamorous Outlaw out. Yeah, I think that maybe this is actually the right play. Torch Breath is good stuff. Torch Breath is good stuff. Because if my opponent made a swing to try to kill off a 6-6, six, six, that kind of implies that they're actually in a bit of a struggleful situation. Jetmere's Fixer is a bit annoying because it can become a 5-5. Five, five. But I think I can handle one more hit from this one. This card is so good. Even in standard, this card's pretty sick. So I block like this. I think this is about as good of a block that I can do. Yep. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah. yeah. Double strike? I don't know. Killing off this one's good. Maybe just a prize fight to kill this off. Something like that. Yeah, and then we'll go to four. That's actually okay. Oh, better not forget the glitter monger, huh? Fuck yeah, dude. This is this is fantastic. I can't believe I can't believe my luck. So, definitely do this. So this is going to need to do one, two, three damage. All right. So now we have a four toughness dude. We'll slowly begin to gain more life. I don't think Groovy G has a way to pierce through this. Could be a huge thing, but... Alright. Give us that depopulate value. Get the jewel thief. So now this is going to have plus one, plus one in lifelink. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm making a mistake. I, I, I incorrectly tapped. And then we're going to win with the Shattered Seraph. Got Bread Initiate. It's fine. Oh my god, are you seeing us? Are you seeing us pulling this off? This is, this is incredible. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I could have done attach and then played Nizi. Nice. Superb. I mean, we're waiting. We're hanging out, man. My opponent, I think, is experiencing utter devastation. Oh, depopulate. This is great because if I control multicolor creatures now, we do the good shit. Oh my gosh, it's terrific. Look, it has plus one, plus one. Dude, 
Who were the non-believers among you? Who thought that we couldn't do it? Show yourselves. Oh my god, I love this is this is how I want to win this game. Slowly, and with a single flapper in the air. Let's not forget, we also have some very intimidating, very scary dusk babies coming out. Easy BFT. <laughs> Ed, you thought that I'd get zero or one wins? Well, you could still be correct. That's for damn certain. This is some fucking sick gaming. Our auger of agonies. There it is. Don't forget that 3-3 gains life, man. Corpse Appraiser, it could have left back, but I think the Snooping Newsy is a good one to swing with. Johnny Lictito says, OP has not played a single good card besides Jewel Thief. That actually might be true. I mean, Jetmere's Fixer's good. Fight for the family is good, yeah. Yeah, every, everything that villain has shown has been pretty trash. Oh my god, is it is it the luckiest that I have fucking ever been? Oh! Zombie Grub Raid, and then the Voxy Raid? My god. Oh, fuck these assholes. Running Quick Draw Dagger? I mean, what a prick. What are you doing? Mm-mm-mm. Well, -mm. oh, there goes my lifelink. I think, I think we can survive. I think we can survive, but you know, I'm feeling a little bit regretful. Voxy, someone who's actually extremely way better than I am drafter in all ways, shapes, and forms. What? They don't have any cards in hand. What am I missing? What am I missing? I'm not missing anything. I'm the best player that's ever lived. Yeah, uh, Vice, for any of you who don't know, absolutely spectacular drafter. Uh, curses a lot, which is something we do a lot here. Um, and let me tell you something, let me tell you something. We, we went seven wins, we went six wins, and then we... First, or, excuse me, second pick, third pick, got the opportunity pick up these these uh, triomes and just said to ourselves, well, let's do some fucking dumb shit. And so uh, we have a variety of haters here who voted. Let's actually take a look at the predictions. Let me actually show you this little beauty, this beauty of a deck. It, ha it, it It's both amazing and terrible at the same time, right? We have, we have like a, just a metric ton of multicolor lands. We have a pair of Dusk Manglers, which is insane. The four drop slot just has too many things in it. <laughs> So we're kind of based blue, green, kinda. Also black is in there too, but you know, we, we, we can't not go five colors. So we got the Torch Breath, we got the Depopulate, or we got some other some other goodies in there. Uh, if, we, if, if we take a look at the, the, at the prediction outcomes, let's just pop this summary out of here. Yeah, look at this. How many wins will Day9 get? 40% of you said five, 14. Oh, look, 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 at the, look at the spend in there, oh, Lysmith. And then three or two, the haters, dude, Nevanol, Faravax, these haters. Who literally said, I despise Dana? Easy BFT, the number one, the editor of the channel, the one that supports YouTube with actual quality content is like, I think Day9 sucks. <laughs> so let's see, forest, plains, or island. We gotta get that plane in Spain. We gotta get that plane in Spain, you know. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. We need to thin the deck. Planes, boom, there it is. Get the socialite out, it'll be great. Rift tears an issue. Tended socialite, I don't see no problems. You wanna swing, I'll block, it's like not an issue. Look, we see white mana. We got a whack right here. Like, I, I, I've thought it all the way through. If this is just a trade, this is the best day of my life. 
F is for family. Are you kidding me? I fucking burned through one of the best combat tricks in the set. <gasps> oh my god, I'm so lucky. Alright, let's do this shit. Notice we actually have all the mana sources we need for it to populate. Pal Day 9 doesn't fuck around. He just draws like primo excellentos. Alright, Spock the Tuke. What you gonna do? Dude, getting one sweeper in these five color control lists, pretty fucking sick, I'm not gonna lie. Well. Well, I hate to say it, but we're definitely gonna whack this one. I don't want to depopulate it right away. <laughs> Lena the Lens says, you can only hear Riker whenever anyone says family. Yeah, I know, man, right? Ohana means family. <laughs> Fucking Riker is such a sicko, dude. I love Riker. Best character ever, man. I'll grow up and be like Riker. Still, my favorite part of that whole sequence is when he's just going, oh. Very well. Play another two drop, Spock. Alright. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Woo! Very well. So we have three different costs of things. Get that red mana source, that's pretty good, huh? It's fucking Snoop and Nooji. Dude, I, I rewatched the Rikard fight about 50 times on YouTube. I was like reaching out to my friends that like don't even play games. I'm like, yo, 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 yo. You gotta see this fight. And guess what? They were all like, oh, Miyazaki's fucking sick. Right? Like fucking everyone gets it, man. Love it. It's so good. There's a reason why I get that game on the PS5. It's because it is destined to crash your PC. Indeed. Indeed. Very well. Today has gone by so quickly. Rocco's Modern Cabaretti Caterer. Rocco's Modern Caterer. Very well. Alright. Alright. Now well, back to doing me. Rocco. Ow. Speak easy, Shava. This is a good one to deal, to just give him the bad deal. Yeah. I mean, I actually think I'm gonna do it now. Cause like, dealing with flyers is a little bit of a pickle for my, for my list. Take three. Don't give a shit. All right, dude. Yo, this this list actually fucking has some stuff going on in it, man. This list has some some serious power. They have a jet mirror. They have a fleet foot dancer. They have Rocco. They have a brazen upstart. I mean, this is... They have a Jetmere Garden? This is like the best Nihilist I've ever seen! You know, I'm gonna have to trade the Newsy, right? So this dies. They get to peak, and I mean, I I'm just assuming there's no... They, like, it couldn't possibly be that Spock the Took has more scary shit than this. Couldn't be. What?! <laughs> Why? Oh, fuck. Oh, very well. Oh, thank the fuck. This 
So we got two Dusk Manglers in there. We have a Seraph. We have... Er. Swings, I got a trade. I'm telling you, D Dusk Mangler, and we get there. All right, Dusk Mangler, and we just fucking get there. It's great. Oh, thank God, a Rafine Informant. I can handle a Rafine Informant. That I can handle. Like, we can handle a fucking Rafine Informant. But I just cannot handle anything more than that. Dude, doing streams while standing is, is incredible. What do you think, Rafine? What's coming, huh? What's coming? What's cooking? What's cooking? Bad looking? Woo! Show me what you got. I'm gonna sacrifice a Dusk Mangler to play a Dusk Mangler. Like, I'm crazy. Yeah, show me. What, what did I hit? What did I hit? What just discarded? Alright. Oh my god, another one brazen upstart, two brazen. Oh my god! Thank god we're running this ridiculous garbage five color deck so we can measure up against the best Naya deck of all time. Oh yeah, by the way, for any of you, we would love for you to submit to us the next what the deck decks. We need these next what the deck decks. So I'm going to block like this because if my opponent can deal one more damage, I'd rather lose this than lose this. Obviously. So we have a new what the deck theme. What the deck is a show where we ask you to give to us ridiculous, incredible, insane decks under various themes. That's good stuff. We ask you to submit to us decks under ridiculous and incredible themes, and then we play them once a month. And normally the themes are things like cats versus dogs was the last one. We do like artifacts versus enchantments, this sort of shit. Um, and this one is a very controversial one because there's a lot of discussion. What's the better format? Explorer or Historic. So we've created a theme. Created the following theme. Submit to us a deck based around exploration. Such as the Explore mechanic, Finding More Lands, shit like this. Or, give us a deck Give us a deck centered around the historic keyword. So that way we can discover which is actually the true uh, best format. And just to show that we're not being biased, uh, we want you to submit that to us in the Explorer format, please. Oh, I guess we don't actually have... Let's see, blue. There we go. Because then I can tap and crack to draw at end of turn. So yeah, yeah, submit to us a deck about exploration or a deck about the historic keyword. Guy's a cleanup crew too. I mean, this is an incredible thing. Seventeen to eight, dude. It's a good thing our deck is broken. What a, what a good thing of that.
I'm gonna gain that life, baby. And explore landfall, powerful lands versus historic, which is legendary artifacts and sagas. Go to our Discord. Go to our Discord. Just look up Day Nine Discord. You'll find it. <laughs> super, super terrific. Super easy. Super straightforward. All the instructions are listed there. And there it is. Ow. Dude, more Jewel Thieves? This is like the best deck I've ever seen. Not not better than our deck, but still, it's it's quite up there. Holy shit. This is a really clever swing by me. Fucking smart. Because my opponent lets it through, no amount of healing from the Skycrier can actually fix that issue. No amount from the Skycrier can actually fix that issue. I can swing with a Shattered Seraph and win the video game. There it is. There it is. Look at this. Draw away, man. Make disappear after that is so good. Oh my god, are we actually going to get the two wins right off the bat? It's unbelievable. Now I just swing in for four in the air. Sheriff, you better not lose this for me, sweetheart. Oh my god, we won. Oh my god, we won. I'm Quibsy since five months has passed. No one has noticed I don't know what's going on in my new job. Is this what corporations usually do? Oh yeah, absolutely. abso frickin lootly are you kidding me? Yeah, all, all the true, true haters of Dale. Oh, hi. You're not a hater. Yeah, you're a good cat. My cat is so great. Yeah, because things that, like, if you think about it, in a large corporation... If you, over the course of six months, make no decisions, and then make one reasonable decision. This is green. Or, yeah, that's good. You, it. It's probably better. If you make, if you make just one reasonable decision, Right, just just a singular reasonable decision. Well, if it's a large company, it has so many customers that you can immediately translate that to huge dividends and gains. Okay. I want double white because then I can more likely cast the depopulate. And I, I need the double green later. Yeah, they, they, they can leverage it, right? Like if, if they have like say a million customers because they're a huge company, you make one good decision, fucking incredible. It's all good, man. Can't wait to make disappear some of this bullshit. Well, this guy isn't getting him a lot of damage. Yep, there's the there's the final one. Now I have all five colors. 
And Moldy Toast is finally going to get to make something big happen. But it's going to get made disappeared. Woo. Yeah, so I mean, like, if everyone barely does anything, but the business is set up well, you're so well leveraged that even a small number of good decisions scale like crazy. Not saying that that's the best way to do it. We're going to do like this so we can keep up the make disappear. Because now we actually look like someone with a shit mana base, which is false. We have an amazing mana base. And we're a really, 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 really good player. Now, if my opponent has a make disappear, what they'll do is they'll actually sacrifice their thing. And what I will do is I will make disappear and sacrifice my thing to target this first make disappear. Sacrificing this lackey. So. 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 Jesus. So this. Wait, what? How does this work? Which one's mine? Wait. How does this work? I think I did that wrong. I think I double... I think I may have messed this up. I think that I think that everything's hilarious. Oh shit, I didn't let it trigger. Fuck. That's what was I couldn't understand what was happening in the interface. Ah shit, man. <laughs> All right, so I see what happened. I was so confused. It is all good though. It's all good. It's all good. We literally had the play, and instead of doing the play, we fucked everything up. That's what happened. I needed to go into full control. So there's a casualty trigger that resolves into the casualty spell. And when I looked at that, I interpreted what I was seeing. I interpreted what I was seeing as a um, a spell and not a trigger that was going to be resolved. Yeah, so so here's what happened. We, we each did a counter a spell and duplicate that spell. So there's it, it's it's false that it goes cast the spell, boom, here's the copy. What it does is it goes cast the spell. And then here's the trigger that's sitting floating in the air. And when that trigger resolves, boom, then it becomes the counter spell. And what happened is that I did not wait. Great. What happened is that I did not wait for that trigger to turn into a counter spell. That said, I mean, we're still going to win because our, our, our deck is busted. My god, you've got me. And it's amazing that even with that flub where basically I sacrificed a creature and destroyed a counter spell and didn't do anything. <laughs> I like infinity for one myself. I feel we're still going to win because we have the best deck ever because we're the, the best player that's ever lived. It's a good situation to be in. There is an issue, though, with, that I don't have enough red and blue mana to do this and whack. Because this is the only black source. This is the only red source, which means this is the only black source. All right, well. Treasure is not actually that big of a deal, so I think actually going to seven and swinging for a bunch and playing another Corpse Appraiser is, is the right play. This is going to be black, red, blue. Crack this, huh? This is the kind of desperation that we're want to see.
Jesus, our deck fucking rules. Holy shit. Now, before that drawing occurs from Sticky Fingers, Moldy Toast has to choose which one gets discarded. And they discarded a Plasma Jockey. Holy shit, man. So now, if they have a way to deal 8 damage this turn, then yes, we do lose. If they don't have a way to deal 8 damage this turn, we whack whatever's there. Perfect. What do I not want to be up against? A plasma Jockey, probably. A Newsy that we cannot cast. So now they're at one, so they still need to deal six damage to win. Dude, this feels great. This is incroyable. This list is. Ah, oh, it's so good! Oh! Oh! If damage would be dealt to you, prevent that damage and mill twice that many cards. Incredible. You love to see it. This is a drubbing. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, we're 3 0 with five color plasma over here, man. I just got off the phone with my doctor, and he said you have critically low levels of fucking shitting on nerds in the face. It feels so good. I'm just following the prescriptions. King of the top decks, when you only put good cards in your deck, Fenrir, then everything's a top deck. Holy shit, are you seeing this, like, absolutely gaseous deck that we have? I mean, my goodness. Alright, let's plop down the Jetmere Gardens. Smash out the island for the Backstreet Boys Bruiser. You know what owns two twos? Fucking three threes. Calling it. I... Way too much power coursing through my veins right now. It's, it's, feels great. Turn me sideways, fucking jerk. At this point in time, if I draw a land, we can't lose. Fafa them. Oh, yeah. Tullinator says, hey, Day9, do you get to see your bro much since he's been in Korea? I watch the streams all day, baby. Love you guys. I haven't gotten to see Nick since our little pandemic heck began. All right, so. Gotten to see him. Rapines and Formans. Yeah, I, I've talked to him. You know, time zone difference makes it a little weird. I basically call him in the morning his time, evening my time. Yeah, man. That could be an issue. I think we permit this damage through. I think we permit this through. Let's see what Fafazam does next. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put the Seraph on the island. No! Alright, well. 
We're gonna chill a little bit. This backstreet bruiser is doing a lot of work, huh? Yeah, so we're, we're gonna wait until this is like... Mage's Attendant, very good spell. Sacrifice this cat. Meow. Until end of turn. So, I'd love a landy. I would love a landy. Book. Land, and then I can out of the way to bounce this, draw a card, all the good stuff. But without a landy, can't do it. That's not dandy. I think I actually need to take this damage. Like, like super capital N needs to take this damage. cycling going on. Not a lot of card playing. Let's slow things down a little bit. Not a lot of bit, but, you know, a little bit. If my opponent swings with a mage as a tenant, I will block with the backstreet bruiser rather than Quetzal Augur of Agonies. This is the game. We'll go to five. Yeah, I think nothing again. Funny you should show up. So we die. Oh, they didn't see it. Fuck yeah. If they swing out, I can only block this and this. That's one, two, three, four damage that makes it through. And then if they connive, they can um, get the extra five. They have two chances of conniving. And these are like certainly spells. And there's just like there's just so many land nerds that have been dumped in the bin. This is unbelievable. Missed it once, they can miss it twice. Oh, they missed it twice. Fuck yeah. They missed it twice. This is the best day ever. This is incredible. I love this. They missed it twice, two times, two chances. Literally, if they swung out and instead of playing the swooper, connive discarding this, then it would have had enough damage. Oh, fuck yeah. That is, that is quite pickly. I do this main. Nice. 
Nice. Flapping, flapping boys are going to be a bit of an issue. Again, if Father Zom just doesn't... Okay. Swing outs are good here. Yeah. And so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage. Two, three, four, five. All right, this is it. Okay. Cheesy fucking Louisey, dude. I mean, we're 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 pretty dead. If we had, if we had just barely, if we had drawn like a land, a pinch sooner, my opponent has six cards left and I have nineteen. That would actually be so funny if we just ripped the depopulate. <laughs> Some serious, serious conniving happening here. I mean, because if it's because, like, if I look, I can block this one in the air. Well, actually, I think more importantly, I we let these things through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. So the question is, if they can get through with four, what four would I let through? I'd let through this, 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 and that. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah. yeah, so now, now I just die. Do they see it? Yes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Alright, so we can block a three damage one. Alright, we can block a three damage one, and we can block a two damage one, and that is the best that we could have done, man. Didn't need to be a close game, but it was a close one. It's a close one. Close one. It's because five color jank is actually like superior form of gamery. All right, three and one, and our loss was close. It's a close loss. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, did we just draw the best possible opening hand? I think we did. You have this many different kinds of mana? Oh shit, that's really bad news. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the relief that I feel seeing that happen. Oh, that's... Alright, well, that's, that's a play right there. How many gathering throngs does Pinguino Joe have? Three. Three's a great number. And I, I don't mean like conceptually, like in general. I mean, that's like a very good amount of throngs to have. So here's what's weird. We. Now, obviously I'm gonna play this, but do I, do I try to whack the gathering throng? I think that this is the correct thing to do, because I, I, if the game goes on long enough, I'm going to have Seraphs, I'm going to have Dusk Manglers and other things, I'm obviously going to be 
intending to drop the glitter monger soon. And my opponent plays gathering throngs, then I think that puts us in okay situations. We want to play this glitter monger first, because with the glitter monger, you know, it, it gives us some leeway to generate more mana, get the dusk mangler sooner, gives us the ability to generate a treasure for white mana in case we want to smash down and depopulate. Demonic Bagels is day nine. How do I decide to give students an A minus and another student a B plus? What do you mean how? You just you just do it with a great vim and vigor. Just get in there. Yeah, I mean, like, so, so when you're asking that, like, are, are you whole, oh, thank God we got the Mysterious Limousine. Like, when you say that, you know, I mean, frankly, I'll be honest. I would do it via likability. I am absolutely not going to play anything for a little bit. I'm waiting for Pinguino Joe to make some moves, man. Dusk Mangler is going to be a killer. I just, you know, likability. Likability is it, man. Because, you know what? Some people fucking... They are not fun to interact with. And I don't know. Just they're not fun to interact with, you know. B+, plus, there it is. And if they want to get concrete, you can just say, like, I worry. I, I, I feel as though you're lacking the communication abilities. Representative of an A- student. You're like, teacher, that's no fair. And then you say, life isn't fair. And then you kick that kid. There might be a mate disappear here. And there's not. Conniving bastard. Ooh, you know, I think I maybe should have waited till end of turn and then just roasted the hypnotic grifter. Then. Sky crier, alright. Calvin, Calvin Chan. So my coworkers talked about StarCraft 2 yesterday, so I had to reset. Oh no! I didn't tap the fucking thing! Here's what I'm gonna do. This is this 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 play stinks a little bit. I have to let my opponent connive once. If they discard a land, great. Then I let them connive again, and then I kill it. Where there's a mill, there's a way, baby. All right, we're safe. Dude, anyone watch Hero and GSL, man? Watching that man was thing of beauty. Loved it. What? All right. I was doing some stuff.
So let's see, they're gonna be dealing four turns. Hmm. My opponent doesn't play anything, that's so good for us. Sacrifice creature. That's so sick. Now I do it because there is no way for my opponent to have a card in hand and then be able to afford it. Incredible! Incredible! Oh my god, do we have lethal in hand? Oh my god, oh my god. Life link. Go thief. Oh my god, yes, yes. Jared created treasure that round. We've missed like 70 treasures. Look at this. Haters and shambles, despisers and shambles, believers, and those who feel nothing, feeling something right now. I'm telling you, man, the Dust Mangler is just an absolute beater. I mean, this guy is he's so powerful. He just he just Anytime the sun starts to set, he doesn't even wait until it's blackout. He, if the sun's out a little bit, it's fine. As long as it's dusk, he's ready to mangle. This is incredible. What an incredible day of drafting. And the way that we were able to pull it off was by correctly identifying when we had Triumph 1, Triumph 2. Baby, what am I gonna do? Crush, 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 crush. Keep this. Waterfront Island Obscura. <laughs> sure gonna be surprised when all of a sudden green cards start falling, you know what I mean? Right, this is this is a little bit of an issue. It's better to make disappear the bigger card and be the bigger man. This, this to me says that Bill Nye doesn't actually have any land. There's no reason you would do that then unless you were landless. Nice. Plains Island Swamp. It's the only plains I have, so I guess we'll just get the double black. Dude, we, we got some soul reads here. Yeah, I'm sure needed those. All right, let's start getting in there. Next thing it drops will probably murder and start healing up. Brokers hide out in the forests. This is, this, is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Red. Dude, let, let's just let's just draw a forest. Oh, dude, Bill Nye. Just science cry. Alright, let's destroy this one. It's really fun to beat someone up who's not able to get any mana. Yeah, that was like a lot of fun. Like somewhere in this design lesson here. I don't know what the lesson is other than it really sucks to be Bill. 
Can you imagine being Bill right now? Goodness. And then nothing. Alright, I mean, wow. All right, I I'll do this first. Play Quasar, Augur of Agonies first. I'll play it first. <laughs> okay, it resolves. We're going in, we're going to town. Yeah, seems seems sensible. Seems like sensible plays any. Fake your own death. Fenrir says again, Dan, I'm king of top decks. Not top decking if you only put good cards on your list. What now, Bill Nye? Why don't you science try? Hmm. God, isn't it? You know, it's there's this thing that you'll see if you watch reality television. Like I don't know if you've ever you've ever seen this where out of the way. I don't know if you've ever seen this where where it's one of these shows where they just like put a bunch of like really atta attractive twenty something guys and girls in a house, and they like make them like go on dates and shit. I watch this garbage, of course I do. And like, the thing that's amusing to me in these is when is when you can tell these two people are so fucking horny that that they no longer are paying attention to how they're communicating or what they're saying. They're just too horny. So they're saying dumb shit, right? They're just like, hey. Oh, hey, I like your trunks. Yeah, you like these trunks? Yeah, you like these? Yeah, it's like my favorite pair. Well, I hope they're your only pair, because then you'll eventually have to take them off. And all the girls are like, woo! And I'm sitting there with my sofa watching, being like, those people are too horny to know that that sounds ridiculous. Oh my god, look at this. My opponent has the sweeper that they think will actually let them win the game. But look at this, I got the Dusk Mangler. Man, that's incredible. My opponent has a sweeper, and I just... Pay life, boom. <laughs> it's incredible, man. Literally, we got swept by a hostile takeover. The only way they can come back in. Doesn't even matter. Boom. But yeah, you know, when, when you can just tell that they're just so turned on that they, like, don't know what they're talking about anymore. Here's the thing. You can be horny in not for uh sexual things you can be you can be like winning so hard you're just like fucking horny for for the win you know what i mean people always say dumb shit if they're like winning really badly and it's not really their responsibility that they're winning but you know they're just horny for the w's yeah mr gray screen you get it you know you ever seen one of those kids who's like horny for money anytime they make a deal or do anything and they're just fucking oh yeah you got you got a light beer? Ha! Oh, I, I I got the fifty dollar a shot whiskey. Ha ha ha! And it's like, oh yeah, this fucking kiddo is like so horny for the money he's making. He has no idea. He sounds like an idiot. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Robo Kitty and Sapper. Like, what did I walk into? We're talking about different types of and textures of horniness. That's what we're talking about. Look, I just I always get there. I can't even believe I'm this good at just getting there. She feels it. Corvid races Day9 is horny for the tangent. Yeah, you can get, you can be horny about how funny someone's finding you and you just keep fucking talking and you're saying dumber and dumber and dumber shit and you really should just like chill out a little bit but you like, you can't because like you're on a roll. You know, and I don't know if this has happened to you where there's like someone you have a crush on and they're like really cool. You like really like them. They start laughing at something you say, and in your brain, it's like, say as much dumb shit as you can. She's in. Oh, out the way, huh? Oh, shit. Fuck yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? You just like keep you keep saying jokes, and at some point you said something that's so unbelievably unfunny that you realize, oh my god, like that wasn't just not funny, that was like anti-funny. Uh which one do I want to kill? I guess the sky crier is the easier target here, huh? Boom. 
Plus four, plus three! Wow, that's so amazing. Each and every one of you know what I'm talking about. Fucking agony. Let's get some mana. Put the rest in my fucking graveyard? Really? Yeah, I think we can probably dusk mangle our way out of this. Sure. A Asaka, so value. Light rigging. All right, it's fine to me. All right, so if I activate this, and then I. All right, I just keep changing my mind all over the place. Let me just destroy this enchantment. Yeah, there you go. Get out of here. Be gone. Anyways, anyways, I'm having I'm having myself a good time in this game here. I'm feeling really positive about just uh, only taking three damage a turn, dust mangling my way back into video game here. See what happens. Alright, here we go. Playing it for three life. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Feels good. Nevin Elsa's. In grade school, I made a kid laugh hard with a clock impression, and he totally became my best friend. That's the purest story I've ever heard. We don't have any wings anymore. GG. Alright. I mean, we can, we can take three damage. It's like, not the biggest deal. Alright. Alright. Card a card. Sack something, fewer blockers. Another card gets discarded. The power of this five color list is just insane. It's just out of control. Good. Who's four life from a dust mangler? I mean, that's just, that's twisted. I mean, I mean, this is ridiculous. I don't really think there's a way that Villain can deal plus seven in the skies, but, you know, maybe there it is. Dude, I, lo I love that. It's like, I did an impression of a clock and made a best friend. Like, that's amazing. QS0 says, did you hear about E3 coming back as an in-person event next year? Do you have any thoughts on it? Here's the thing. I think the games industry has agreed that, like, first week of June sort of thing, you know, second week of June, somewhere in this time frame, that this is, this is good to have everyone do their games together because then kiddos like me set aside time and they go, oh, it's Christmas, there's so many game announcements, Callisto Protocol, woo! You know, that's great, that's terrific. But the idea of going to, like, like E3 show floor, QS0, I don't know if you've been there, but like, I mean, it's, it's awful. It's hell on earth. I can think I, I can think of nothing that more resembles the experience of being on that ship in Event Horizon than going to the E3 show floor. Like, like you you go there and you're like, definitely someone took a shortcut through hell here. Definitely. Like, you go there and you wait in a line that's like a, a century long.
What do I even fucking want out of this? Probably planes. You gotta depopulate, it's right there. Oh my god, so it's it, like you, you wait for an hour and you get to play a game for like 11 minutes. Very Vandal's a bit of an issue. Nice, we'll get rid of it now. And then you immediately get kicked out. I think that's Vigilance too. This card's so good. We're gonna wait for Spud Fuss too to just flood this. What it, What the fuck? Menace life? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, says, I've never been, but I always wanted to experience it. Um, and I, I heard it had gotten pretty bad the last few years before I paused it for COVID. Well, it's that, it, it's that it sort of, like, meandered into a bunch of different conflicting things. E3 used to be the place where, if you were, like, Walmart or Best Buy or Babbage's or EB Games or any other hot properties of the late 90s, early 2000s, you wanted to go find what games you could buy to sell in your Babbage's, to sell in your Walmart, to sell and so on. So there'd be a lot of business to business stuff there where, yeah, yeah, I kill it. And it resolves. So, you know, there, there was a lot of just, like, going to the show floor and having a conversation with someone. Like, oh, yeah, show me your game, and they'd bring you to these back booths, and you'd make these massive deals once a year. As publishers, as peripherals manufacturers, it was a big deal. And so, there started to be some more consumers that would show up who were, you know, early days. It was just, like, very savvy consumers who were really good about understanding and wanting to learn more. Um... I think this might be time to just chill for a little bit. I'm actually not going to put the Seraph on a land, because I think that that'll put my my deck a little bit more face up. I'm actually going to take some risks here. And, you know, some, some savvy consumers that were interested in getting early looks at things, they would start to show up, right? They would start to hang out. And so, you know, the, the booth started to have some consumer-facing things. You know, you have a setup, you can see the game and shit. So I don't want to go super face-up yet. So I think what I want to do is try to see if Spud Fuss will play a little bit more down. That block makes it look like I don't have some instant speed stuff. Otherwise, I would have blocked the Girder Goons. That's, that's actually pretty, pretty good shit. Play it. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Even better. Holy shit. I mean, this is incredible. And so, like, these consumer booths, the E3 started to grow and 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 get bigger and get bigger and get bigger and get bigger. Until it became just these fucking behemoths that you see, that you see before you now. Beep, beep. Really? Get the fuck out of here. Got him. Oh, you got me. Bang. See you later to whatever this is. What is that? It was, ooh, rooftop nuisance. That's good shit. And then day nine started to take one damage a turn. 
Excuse me, says, would you say going to PAX or TwitchCon is a more engaging and fun experience? Yeah, I like I like PAX. I like PAX. PAX, PAX at least makes more sense to me. Where it actually is consumer focused exclusively. Yeah, because E3 started to have like this B2B thing and then it, like because the, the show floor at the Los Angeles Convention Center is not actually that gigantic. Now when it starts getting all filled up with all these, you know, different areas for peripherals, different areas for games. I mean, even just the square footage of it. It's not like uh, you know, Gamescom. Let's just do this. Let's, let's take a peek at there. Get rid of this guy. Send them the dusk. Like, game, Gamescom is so big, it's, like, hard to even imagine it. Like, I get overwhelmed at Gamescom. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, Showtime Towers has just got back from seeing Top Gun. It was fantastic. Oh, my God, right? Dude. You can believe in Thetans. You can believe in yourself. If we do x equals 2, no, so I can actually make x equals. I don't actually know what to do here. I think I just don't attack. My opponent's gonna mill out, like, very soon, so I just need to, like, try to stay alive. Gallagher's for life, always. We're hanging out. Part of me wants to lose this game because I don't get like another game with this beautiful five color dusk mangle fest. All right. It resolves. Perfect. So, I'm definitely going to block like this. Yeah, and I think I just hit this, put this guy away. Doink, doink, doink. I think that seems good. Holy shit, Void Ren? Fucking Jesus. X equals two. I'll pick off one of these guys. do this, because it's an unblockable. Alright. Sacrifice a creature. Sacrifice this creature. Sack, take four damage, deal five lethal. Boom! Dude! The best draft we had was the five color one. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Look at this horse. Look at this horse. I'm proud of myself. I'm pleased. Some of those games our opponents got mana screwed. And the one we lost, we got a little mana screwed. So there it is. Seven wins. Look at this beauty.